Hey guys, I'm Sage Valentine and I'm back here to review another episode of NBC's Emerald City. This review is all about season one, episode four, entitled Science and Magic. So when we last left Jack, Jack had fallen from a great height after being pushed by Tip. And she did so by accident because he kissed her to comfort her and that kiss brought out feelings that made her confused on top of the fact that she's still trying to cope with the fact that she has always been a girl despite the fact that someone had put a spell on her, the witch mommy, and made her look like a boy for all that time. So she was confused, she lashed out, she pushed him, and it looked like he had fallen to his death. On a side note, I didn't think he was dead though because I saw some promotional pictures and in one, the actor was standing sideways and you could see that he had a metal hand. So I knew something was going to happen that would make him into Emerald City's version of the Tin Man. So Tip attempts suicide because she's so distraught after what happened. She thinks Jack is dead. And this captain pops up. He's able to distract her and kind of talk her off the ledge. And in doing so, Tip asks to join his brigade. And he tells her he has a, quote, place for her. And that place is at an orphanage that Glinda is chilling at. But I'll get to that in a minute. Now, Toto, Lucas, and Dorothy are taking the shortcut to Emerald City. Lucas seems to be stalling, he seems nervous, and all of a sudden this little girl pops up and she latches herself to him. Meanwhile, the wizard's guards are at a place called Nimbo. Apparently, they pretty much burnt the place down as much as they could and killed a whole bunch of people, including the alderman Jeremiah's wife. And probably their daughter's husband or boyfriend or whomever because the daughter's pregnant and the guards find some magic underground it's like a little magical pocket and what looks like a little kind of cubby thing okay the wizard is on his way to nimbo and elizabeth is trying to convince him to take her but he's just like no you don't know what you're talking about i'm gonna go and take elizabeth and he heads to get her out of the dungeon because he needs her help now, Tip is taken to a mansion that turns out to be an orphanage that's run by this black woman who has, like, braids and gold beads in her hair. And she, if I remember correctly, tells Tip that Tip needs a bath and they need to take her to be bathed. And all of a sudden, Glenda is shown looking down and she tells this woman that Tip needs to be baptized because apparently all the girls are baptized. And then it dawns on me. These young ladies are being bred and educated to become members of the Wizards High Council. And don't forget that those ladies are very chaste and pure and the whole shebang. So, Dorothy doesn't want to leave this little girl, the one that's latched on to Lucas. And Lucas is just like, I don't want to help this little girl. Dorothy wants to make sure that the girl returns to her home safely jane is the woman that patched up jack and she reveals to him that he is the tin man or has become a tin man with a brand new heart and jack is completely distraught and i completely understand why because that whole situation seems to be extremely upsetting dorothy and the little girl are back at the little girl's village and the child seems worried and Dorothy notices like there are shells in the child's ear. For some reason, I'm thinking that it's some sort of like um, steampunk version because you know that Emerald City is kind of sort of steampunk. It's like a steampunk version of those little shells of like some sort of implant to help the girl hear but in actuality the little girl stuck those in her ears to stop the sound because she can hear just about everything and it's kind of driving her a little mad and it's scaring her the wizard seems to like anna and he tells her while he's letting her out of the dungeon that he's going to take her to nimbo because she challenged him which is also the reason why he locked her up in the first place. 
And he reveals to Anna that she was right. He cannot bring his giants back to life. Or the giants back to life. And Anna says that the beast will come from the sky and it will have a brain and a heart and will be possessed or possed of relentless strength, meaning it will be really, really strong. But she believes that the wizard can kill it. So she believes in him and that's probably the sole reason or one reason why he really, really likes her, in case you guys didn't know. Because every time the wizard is in the room with Anna, all you see are hard eyes. Just big, huge hard eyes. I just think of that, like, smiley face emoji with the red hard eyes over his eyes. So, Jack is struggling with his new limbs. And Jane reveals that she takes projects for the royal army i'm just like what royal army who's royal what is going on and she reveals that she gave jack a new heart that will never break and jack says that's where you're wrong and i'm just sitting here like jack is still distraught over what happened with tip i can't wait until those two are reunited because they are just the cutest little pair Glenda offers the young ladies at the orphanage a chance to join the high council under her tutelage or her education. So Tip is like fussing in the back. She's like, I don't want to take a bath. You're not going to touch me. And Glenda leaves the room with the girls and goes to Tip and she tells tip she wants to help her and all of a sudden here comes the mistress of the west my favorite and she's just like well i want to help her too and then we see this random woman and man popping up because dorothy was inquiring as to who this little girl's parents are and they're calling the man and the woman are calling the little girl sylvie and it just seems like something isn't right with that situation and dorothy senses it as well and she wants to see Sylvie's home. And she makes it to the door and is about to go inside with Sylvie and her new quote-unquote parents when Lucas grabs her and basically tells her that the wizard's army, led by Eamon, or Eamon, is there in this town. And they are looking for Dorothy. Dorothy pulls out her gun... <laughs> Andy, get your gun. And Lucas reveals to her that he cares whether she lives or she dies, as we already know, because we already know that Lucas is in love with Dorothy, and she feels the same, and their little puppy love is just so cute. Glinda is not here, once again, for West meddling in the situation with Tip. She's just like, why are you here? Like... What do you want? Why is it every time I'm doing something, here you are? And Tip has to make a choice who she wants to learn under. West or Glenda? And basically her only choice is, as she says, to become a nun or a whore. And I'm just laughing because whoever put that line in this episode hit the nail on the head in so many ways. You have no idea. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm not here for that either, Tip. So you choose your own way. Jack is struggling with his new limbs and he meets this very eccentric, sharp dressing lady with a golden mask, better known as Lady Ev. And she has a very wicked sense of humor. By the time Dorothy makes it back to Sylvie with her parents, she finds Sylvie shaking, crying with like darkened pupils, and she has turned the man and the woman into stone. And Dorothy frees her by taking something and knocking the hell out of the male statue. And obviously she has to do the same to the female statue because they are holding the little girl's hands. Okay. So Anna and the wizard are together in the next scene and the wizard seems so happy that she finally woke up and she's okay, which is why I truly believe that he is so in love with Anna and it's actually cute, really cute. <laughs> Although some people are like, oh, that's so creepy and stuff. It's just like, it, it's cute though. It's kind of cute, the creepy sort of way, but it's kind of cute. 
anyway he reveals his feelings by saying he thought he lost her and he didn't know what he would have done without her i'm just like sappy so sappy and Anna tells him, listen, she to chose service over pleasure and she cannot stray. So does Anna have feelings for the wizard? I don't know, but the wizard's definitely into her. Definitely. So Anna tells the wizard, listen, you need to turn the alderman to your side because the idea of killing him would only turn him into a martyr. But basically, if you turn him, then the rest of the town will essentially listen to him. And then it will calm down the whole wizard, we can't stand you, we want to kill you situation. As far as Tip is concerned, she finally takes a bath, but finds out that she is not alone. There's another girl in there, and that girl is trying to convince her at first to follow Glinda, and then Tip is just like, eh, and then the girl says, well, you know, you could go with West, and West has stuff that will help you forget, and I'm just thinking, so you want to get this girl hooked on opium, and then it's revealed later that that girl wasn't just a girl, it was West sitting in the bath with Tip. Tip knew that West was in the bath with her as well, and she lets West know this, and she says adamantly, I don't want to forget anything, but I want your magic. And I'm wondering, what does she mean by this? But I'm assuming we'll find out that information in episode 5. Alderman Jeremiah reveals that there is no magic in Nimbo, so there was no reason why the wizard had to do what he did. But essentially he's lying because there was a little mini pocket of magic underground that we found out about and the wizard found out about as well. Jeremiah reveals that he's pro that beast that the wizard is so afraid of, and he said that the beast represents cleansing and purification and the wizard asked Jeremiah if he believes in magic or in science and Jeremiah says something to the effect of will science save his grandchild Amon is about to kill Dorothy he sentences her to death and then he sees Lucas's sword he asks Dorothy about it because he's been hunting the person who owned that sword and Dorothy is not about to tell him anything. He grabs little Sylvie. It looks like he is going to cut her throat and then all of a sudden Dorothy pulls out her gun. Lucas pops out to help and when Eamon sees Lucas, he calls him by the name of Roan. Dorothy ends up having to shoot Eamon because Eamon has a one-track mind despite the fact that she kept telling him to stop. And I was like, shoot, I don't blame you for doing what you had to do. Lucas realizes that Eamon knew the old him, the Roan him. Jack learns that he is now the property of Princess Languadier, a.k.a. Lady F. She's the daughter of King F., and that kingdom is the reason why he's alive because they financed everything. So he owes them big time. The princess liked him when she met him and now she owns him. Apparently little Sylvie is what I thought possibly a witch. And Dorothy tells Lucas that in the modern world, science and technology is the magic that they have. And then she lets him listen to her iPhone and plays the song Ain't No Sunshine by singer Bill Withers, which was a perfect song to end this episode for us to hear. Um, the wizard is looking after Anna, and again, he has major hard eyes, like major, major hard eyes, like he's so in love with her. The alderman makes a speech and says, magic made them weak. It could not save us or them. We embrace the teachings of the wizard. And the only reason he's doing this is because the wizard pretty much threatened his daughter's life and the life of her unborn child. 
Lucas tells Dorothy that the man he is today is who he wants to be. And then Lucas and Dorothy kiss, and it's so cute. In a later scene, we see Lucas, Dorothy, and Sylvie resting. And then all of a sudden, someone is approaching. They split up. Lucas takes Sylvie. Dorothy takes off running. Lucas is caught by Eamon. Why am I not surprised? But Dorothy ends up getting caught by Ojo who throws a boomerang that hits her in the head. And you're probably saying to yourself, who the heck is Ojo? Well, Ojo was the heavyset dude from the first episode that served as Dorothy's translator. He basically told her everything that was about to happen to her and little things about the Munchkin land and the Mistress of the East and all that stuff. Somebody paid him to be a bounty hunter, and I believe that person was the mistress of the West. So that's about it, guys. That's the end of my review. I love you all. Take care, and let me know what you thought of the episode. I'll be back on Friday to do another review of Emerald City, and I will be back on February 12th, 2017 to do my review of AMC's The Walking Dead. So stay tuned. I love you guys. Bye guys, I'm Sage Valentine. Bye. <laughs>